All right, good morning, everyone. It is 1045. We're going to start our last lead meeting here for the 21-22 uh, school year. Hard to believe it's been over two years of lead meetings, and you're going to hear this throughout the meeting today. Uh, a great big thank you. Any success we've experienced this year is due in large part to you. So thank you for all the work that you've done. We've accomplished a lot together. Uh, we're in postseason play here. We're seeding. We're about to conclude uh, the spring season here uh, yet this year. We'd be remiss if we didn't recognize uh, what you're dealing with and what you're working through with many of our students here in your schools, uh, the latest strategies in Uvalde, uh, tragedies in Uvalde, Texas, um, and Buffalo, New York. Uh, we have much work to do within our society, and we need to recognize that. We're also on the second anniversary of the death of George Floyd, and we know those, those um, conversations take place in your schools, and you're impacted by that. Again, we thank you for all your work. We do have uh, a wealth of information here today. And if we could go to the agenda at this time, Laura, uh, what we have in store for you today is uh, an update on where we're at with our last board meeting. Eric's going to talk about together we can make a difference uh, as well as an opportunity with a, a survey with partnership with the University of Minnesota, update on officials and some tasks moving forward. Uh, heading into summer, what we meet, need to do, and then our quick takes and a lengthy checklist uh, as we get through today. So let's move on to our next slide, please. One of the items that we will be talking about at the George or at the June board meeting will be um, bylaw 110 and 111 policies. Please remember that bylaw 110 was changed at the uh, rep assembly. Therefore, the, the policy needs to match that. Remember things like school years versus semesters, um, ninth grade versus seventh and eighth grade, and more specifics on how to participate in seventh and eighth grade will be coming to you. What you can note and expect from our ad hoc committee on bylaw 110 and 111, uh, out of 111, you'll see changes to number seven uh, that will give you more uh, guidance and assistance when you're working with families as well as language that will be far more clear around families that have been separated as opposed to divorced and or never been married. So some cleanup there in that policy language, remember that can happen and will be approved, we hope, at our board uh, meeting in June next week. Uh, Eric, at this time, why don't you uh, update us on activity of proposals from the winter and where they're at as they will be heard at our next board meeting as well. Thanks, Bob, and uh, appreciate everybody finding time here in a really busy time at schools. Recognize that in conversations that I've had that lots is going on. I want to also say thank you to our board of directors for their work over the course of this school year. And uh, with the calendar, activity advisory proposals from the winter is on board for the meeting coming here in June. Uh, four different sports with a number of proposals in each one with alpine ski, with basketball, with uh, wrestling and also with dance. Uh, and so the, the board will work through those. Uh, they have been in front of the board at the April uh, board meeting as well as in a May workshop. And they've also been in front of our region committees and appreciate all of the feedback and the recommendations relative to that. So a very active board meeting plan for June 7th. Uh, and all of those uh, rule changes, should they be approved, will be distributed to you so you're ready for those uh, winter proposals or those winter changes in any of the rules that come forward. So again, thanks to our board for their work and we'll move ahead to the next slide. I recognize that the last thing anybody on this call needs is one more thing to do. Um, and at the same time, we've got great partnerships with uh, our sports medicine uh, committee and, uh, and with partnerships with other state organizations. And so uh, one thing that we're working on is a working title of Together We Make a Difference. This is around student engagement in moving activities in schools towards a greater level of respect, understanding, inclusion, and belonging for all participants. We know that within schools and within our contests, we've had issues this year and maybe more uh, media around that than in past years. And we have an opportunity and a responsibility to address that. We know that students are a critical part of the work that needs to happen there. So together with MASA, MASSP, MNIAAA, the Coaches Association, AMSD, and even other organizations, there's a commitment to move forward to work with our students in making a difference. And so Forbes Solutions is the uh, entity that we are working with, headed by Paula Forbes, as well as her partner, Dario Otero. Uh, and these folks are 
very, very accomplished in the area uh, of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, and do a wonderful job in working with schools. Uh, most recently, they've, they've been a big part of the Reimagine Minnesota. And so what you can look for coming uh, in the next uh, few months is uh, likely the, the high school league is going to reach out to about 30 different or 15 to 20 different schools to try and get a couple of students that would be part of a virtual group that would assist in steering the student conversations that will be happening. We're looking to move to regional meetings to invite students from any school in August and ultimately moving toward a statewide student conference. And what this is about is bringing student voice to it, as well as bringing a collective message from our students that can be brought back through our schools as to what we expect of one another, what we need to be successful, and how we can best speak to our students in these particular areas. So appreciate everyone's involvement, especially our partner organizations and their commitment to this work as we look to provide additional resource and build a, a community approach across the state to having our activities and our programs be as respectful, as inclusive, and, uh, and bring together the diversity that we have within our state in a positive way. So moving on, and one more item that I have, and this is kind of where I led to initially, sorry about that, but uh, one more thing we're looking at is U of M long COVID survey. So uh, our partner, uh, Dr. Bill Roberts, is a lead researcher as well with the University of Minnesota. And he chairs our sports medicine advisory committee, has been integral to the work that we do. But ultimately, we want our activities to be as safe as they can be. And the U of M, uh, Dr. Roberts, along with another a team of individuals there, are pulling together information and data around impacts and symptoms of long COVID. How do we fit in? Really, we're looking for our administ activities administrators to do two things with our students. Uh, this week, we sent out a note uh, to you asking you to share a letter with our school or with our students families, uh, as well as uh, anyone else probably keeping your coaches aware of this as well. Um, and so part of the requirement of the survey is that they get a preview of this beforehand. Next week, we will send a link and we ask that you forward that link on to your families of your student athletes for them to complete the survey should their student athlete have experienced COVID over the last couple of years. Um, it is not a time bound piece right now. So reminders in uh, June as uh, you may be in, engaged with students through summer contact period, et cetera, could be assistive in this, but primarily two things to get the letter out to explain what the survey is and to make sure that they understand that it's legitimate and then getting this, the link out to assist them in being able to complete the survey would be much appreciated. Bob, with that, I'm gonna turn it back to you. And again, thanks to all of our ADs all year long for all the work that you do, appreciate it. Yeah, and, and Laura, maybe if we could just back up the slide four, I just wanna reiterate, when you, when you see the organizations here that are working with the Minnesota State High School, back to slide four, if we could, Laura, especially for our ADs that haven't been in this position very long, when you get questions from your community or from your school board or from your superintendent on, what are we doing around some of the most difficult experiences we've seen in some time? I think what Eric is saying, we're in conversations with these groups and our liaisons and schools have been saying, where are resources that we can utilize? Eric, what I'm hearing you say is that we will start to see some of these resources coming out of the great conversations in those planned next steps. Is that correct? Correct, Bob. Thank you. Yeah, and, and utilize, again, a slide like this when you're asked those questions, where are we going and what will happen next around some of those conversations. Thank you, Laura. Let's move on to slide six, if we can. Uh, just to reiterate, you've heard some of this before. Uh, again, we hear it from our, our liaisons. What a, what a great conversation we had again with a, um, a group that just continues to give. Um, and what we heard is that as difficult as this spring has been, and especially the start, um, that officials have done a great job, assigners have done a great job of getting caught up. At the same time, just a reminder around bylaw 413 and the number of officials that re are required in those contests. Um, the last thing we want to do at this time of the year is issue censures around those that are doing something other than bylaw, what bylaw 413 states. Yet we've had some schools that have experienced that um, and know that we're gonna do our best to serve you yet understand what that policy says within the bylaw of 413 and the required number of officials. Uh, I'm gonna turn over to Lisa. Lisa, let's talk a little bit about a state of officials as well as uh, coach ejections. Lisa. Thanks, Bob. 
Good morning, everybody, and thanks for being on with us today. Um, around coaches' ejections, we have been seeing um, coaches and players get ejected this spring. And as we're working to retain those officials, this is an area that we all need to partner together with and ensure that our coaches understand that getting ejected isn't really helping the problem with our retention of officials. I know Jason has been working with the Federation on some recruitment and retaining pieces and please have those intentional conversations with your coaches and and players that we want to make sure we're keeping them in the game and not getting ejected by our by our officials at this time i think bob unless i missed something on that i am going to turn it over to jason yeah no i think you uh you did very well on that lisa and i'll turn it over to jason to talk about opportunities around recruitment and retention as well as registration for next year jason Thanks, Bob. So uh, from a recruitment and retention uh, standpoint, uh, we've talked about this in the past, uh, starting with recruitment, um, personal invitations to get into the avocation of officiating is critical. Um, and you know your communities, uh, your coaches know your communities, your players, your parents, and so forth better than we do. And there's just a higher success rate when there's a personal connection from one of you to a prospective official that, hey, you have a good feel for the game, uh, good temperament, you should give officiating a try. They're much more likely to try that than if it's a, a cold call um, or some kind of ad from the league or, or otherwise. So those personal invitations and connections that you have with your communities uh, are really critical to getting new officials. And if every and if every school was able to do that with one person, we would have 500 new officials every year. Um, so really encourage you to connect with your communities and those that you think would be would be good officials. And um, the next part of that is, is retention, and and that's just much more important than recruitment. Recruitment is great, and we do need to do that. But as educational leaders, you understand how important it is to keep quality coaches and quality teachers in your buildings. And officials are no different. It's much better to keep officials in it and keep the quality ones um, rather than recruit new, new, new all the time and try to, to continually train them and, and keep them up to speed with players uh, who are getting bigger, faster, and stronger all the time. So. Uh, retention is really critical and behavior and how we treat those officials is a, is a really key aspect of that, of that piece. Um, something you should know is that registration for the 22-23 school year is open. And if you do recruit new officials, um, don't feel like you need to take them through all the steps. Just send them uh, to us at the league and we will take it from there. We will get them connected with mentors or an association uniforms, uh, equipment, and so forth. We'll get them going and get them ready for next year. And, and that process, that recruitment, that registration process, all of that, that all starts now um, in anticipation of next year. Once we get into seasons, um, we're kind of too late at that point. So whatever we can do now in advance, and I know it's a busy time um, and through the summer, is really going to be appreciated in that effort. So uh, thanks to all of you for your work. Um, best wishes on the successful conclusion of the school year. Good. Thank you, Jason. Uh, and let's make next year our, our most uh, effective year in recruiting new officials. I like what Jason said. One new official in every building would create 500 new officials. And that's a great goal to have. Have those conversations with that person in your building that may be interested or has officiated but hasn't registered um, to be a Minnesota State High School League official. We heard this from ADs and from our liaisons again as we head into the summer coaching waiver. Um, just a reminder what the difference is and who the summer coaching waiver impacts. That summer coaching waiver is you giving permission to your head coaches to work with your student athletes when that begins and when's that, when that ends. And then as we go on to slide number eight, Again, that has to do more with that student athlete. Uh, again, that student athlete, um, technically they can begin. Um, their summer definition is uh, following this, this coming Saturday and what that means for them and what they have the option to be able to do. What that does is gives them a little more flexibility in their participation. That being said, making sure that our coaches complete that summer coaching waiver request. And I'm starting to hear about things like a JV a lacrosse tournament 
that has non-member schools in June competing against member schools that are still in play like JVs, right? Again, if it is your team wearing your jersey, utilizing your coaches, that is your team. Just a reminder that Minnesota State High School League teams cannot play against other states or clubs that are not Minnesota State High School League member schools and or teams. So as you hear about those opportunities or as you see teams registering for those, please make sure um, that you're protecting their eligibility and protecting yourself as they participate in those opportunities. That being said, if we could go on to the next slide. Thank you, Laura. Remember our no contact period during the summer uh, that's located in bylaw 208.4. Um, that no contact period this year is July 2nd through the 8th. Uh, I believe it's uh, up through 2031 on page 48 in the handbook. It will show the dates in which the no contact period um, takes place. Also remember that there are exceptions for softball and baseball as this policy was adopted. And there are no other appeals. There are no appeals. Um, there are exceptions in baseball and softball, but there are no appeals for opportunities during a no contact week. All right, at this time, if I didn't miss anything, I'm going to turn it over to Charlie. Great, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Bob. Um, just wanna uh, go through a few quick takes here with, uh, with each of you as we head into summer. Um, just a reminder, as we're in the midst of our spring tournaments, uh, there is COVID and we still have a related COVID guidance. Um, so just make sure that, that you are um, uh, aware of the, uh, the guidance that exists. And if you encounter the need to pursue roster replacements as a result of positive cases, um, that you can contact your tournament manager. If you need assistance, uh, we can then in turn work with them as, uh, as we work through this process. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, just know too that uh, as teams qualify for state tournaments and or individuals, uh, we will be hosting participating schools meetings as we have done throughout the course of this year. These meetings have been super effective uh, in eliminating the confusion um, and, uh, and questions that surround your schools and your individuals participation in our tournaments and we'll continue to do so this spring. Make sure that if you have qualifying teams or individuals that you are working with your coach to ensure that uh, attendance is um, a part of your uh, tournament planning, uh, and that will greatly assist all of us as we work through the tournaments. Uh, brackets and ticket links will be uh, continually updated with um, the latest information that we have. Um, and as, uh, as uh, teams qualify, uh, brackets uh, get uh, complete uh, and, uh, and ticket venues and locations are finalized, all of that information will be available to you uh, under each of the respective uh, tournaments. And much of that information is uh, accessible and ready to go right now. Um, also know that uh, at the local level, your board uh, will need to be taking action on a membership resolution uh, should you choose to continue to be a part of the Minnesota State High School League. Uh, I know many boards are taking that up uh, right now in, uh, in the month of June, and I would encourage you to, uh, to work with leaders at your uh, school or district um, to, uh, to make sure that that happens. Uh, we're excited to uh, welcome Phil Archer as part of our executive staff on June 6th. And with the addition of Lisa just a few weeks ago and, uh, and Phil coming up here in a couple of weeks, uh, also know that, that uh, staff assignments will be adjusted uh, here at the league office. And as soon as we have those finalized, we'll get that published uh, on our league website, uh, in our directories. Uh, and of course, we'll communicate those, uh, those changes out to you uh, to assist you. Um, and, uh, and so you have your point of contact for questions related to the different programs and responsibilities here in the league office. Uh, as Jason mentioned, uh, officials registration uh, is open. And uh, so again, uh, those officials that you know, uh, please encourage them to, um, uh, to re-register and, and uh, uh, support our activities. And also, again, just a, a, another nod to um, recruit uh, just even a couple of officials um, to, uh, to pursue that registration and eligibility process. And finally, um, in our office, uh, we have just confirmed 
uh, the summer schedule. We are working on uh, building the registration and publishing that information. So uh, as you have new coaches that are joining your ranks, uh, make sure that you uh, determine uh, what they need to meet the certification and the Minnesota State statute requirement. Uh, our head co uh, coaches course will be available and we have a number of courses scheduled uh, in June, July, August, and even September. Um, so look for that in your dashboard um, under the link uh, under the high school league resources. And with that, I'm going to turn this over uh, to Laura, who's going to walk us through um, a hefty checklist. Good morning, everyone. And as Charlie said, the checklist is long as it is really intended to take you through the summer. Things to be aware of and put on your calendars to take care of. A reminder that tomorrow is the deadline for activity registrations for all schools for the 22-23 school year. We are at about 320 registrations completed at this point. So still looking for a number of those um, before tomorrow. The second one that is due tomorrow is participation numbers. And just a reminder um, on these, these are incredibly important for a number of reasons. They help us provide at our office um, numbers to gauge amount of insurances purchased for schools around both concussion and catastrophic insurance, but also do a lot to help us work in program planning. Um, and again, those are due tomorrow. The membership resolution that Charlie talked about, that has a July 30th deadline, allowing you time to work with your school boards and boards of control this summer. Um, we also talked earlier about coaching waivers. Please make sure that your coaches have completed those and that you have approved those for any coaches that you're going to approve those for and that you've done that before those coaches begin to work with those athletes this summer. Eric talked about the U of M long COVID survey. There are two items on that. The first one is the letter that goes out to schools and that can go out now. That was in an earlier update this week. And then on Tuesday, May 31st, directly after Memorial Day, we will send you the link to send out to student athletes families. We talked earlier about eligibility bylaw changes. And again, there's a bit of a, a delay in some of your regular processes this year as we wait for those to complete. The eligibility brochure, which is usually available by this time, will not be available until after the June board meeting, and we've had time to put that information into that. Going along with that, if you have students that you already know that will be transferring in the 22-23 school year, we ask that you wait to submit those because, again, those bylaws and policies will be changing. Two items around coaches. Number one, if you are hiring new head coaches, make sure that they are certified as head coaches. And if they are not, use that schedule that Charlie talked about to make sure that you get them registered over the summer. And secondly, as you get new coaches, work with them to get into the State High School League dashboard so they are up and ready for next school year. Next week, we'll be sending you a survey about LEAD, asking for some input and reflection on how this year and last year have gone and where you'd like that to go in the future. And then the big one, Tuesday, August 9th, 2022, will be our first LEAD for the 22-23 school year. That is the Tuesday before activities begin. So mark that on your calendar. And again, of course, we'll give you some reminders throughout the summer. Most of these will have some how to's in today's update. So as you work through them and are wondering how to manage them, look for that in today's update. With that, I'm going to turn it back to Bob to close out the meeting. Very good, Laura. Well done on a lengthy checklist. And thank you to Charlie on a lengthy um, hot takes as well. So I appreciate that. Um, as we conclude here, our last lead meeting for the year, um, please know again, the common theme should have been thank you. We need to recognize a group of individuals and our lead liaisons who, if they've been with us since the beginning, they've had over 70 meetings seeking out information and delivering information to you. We will continue to do so, but that is a group again that we value so much. Thank you for all the work that you've done across the state of Minnesota with our lead liaisons. Um, make sure that you're enjoying your Memorial Day weekend with family and friends. Enjoy that week, and we hope to see you at a tournament. Uh, if not, we will see you over the summer, and if not there, we'll see you on lead again. 
on August 9th, I believe that uh, next date will be. If you have a new AD in or around your school district, make sure that they're aware of opportunities that will take place that week as well um, in association partnership with MNIAAA. So thank you for all of your work. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend and uh, finish the race strong here as we have a little time left here in this school year. Thank you.